Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you can join us for our worship here this evening for Monday Thursday. I'd invite you to take a moment here. You can stop the video if you wish and prepare yourself a worship space wherever you're at. Maybe bring in a Bible or a candle, maybe some tea or coffee. Also, we will be doing communion this evening, so you may want to have bread and wine or juice available. And we'll also be doing a quote-unquote foot washing. Uh, so you may want to have some water and a towel available. Uh, so take a moment here if you need to, pause the video, and then come back to us when you're ready. And so we're so glad that you're here with us as we come to this special day of the year, this time when Jesus gathered the disciples together, approaching the holiday season that they were in for a meal in the upper room. Let us open with prayer. O oh God, your love is embodied in Jesus Christ, who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash from us the stain of sin, so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial, and praise him always as Lord and Christ, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you hadn't done so already, I would urge you to print out the, or, or bring up on your screen the bulletin for today so you can follow along in on uh, the liturgical parts of the worship service here today. And let's join in on the call to worship. Let's all join in this in unison. This is the day when Christ, our teacher and Lord, knelt down to wash disciples' feet, showing us how to love and serve one another. This is the day when Christ, the bread of heaven, shared a holy meal with his followers, offering a feast of abundant life and grace for all. This is the day when Christ, our Passover lamb, surrendered himself to those who would kill him, setting us free from sin and death forever. And the proof of God's love is this. While we were still sinners, his son died for us, for our sake. So in full confidence, let us become before God and confess our sins by following in the confession that is in the bulletin. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully or love another as you command. In your mercy, forgive us and cleanse us. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. And let us take a moment for our silent confessions. And since God has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And let us offer our prayer for illumination before we begin our readings today. Eternal God, by your word and spirit, you have given us a new commandment to love and to serve one another in Christ's name. Let the good news of your liberating love be sealed in our hearts and shown in our lives through your word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we have two readings today. The first is from Psalm 116. 
I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because He turned His ear to me, I will call on Him as long as I live. How can I repay the Lord for all His goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of His people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. O Lord, I truly am Your servant. I am Your servant, the son of Your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to You and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord and in the presence of all His people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in Your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. And our second reading today comes from the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. It was just before Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured the water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Then the Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, a person who has already had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so, must, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Word of the Lord. In our message today, I ask you to put yourself into the picture. Put yourself here among the crowd. Make yourself one of the disciples. Which one is your choice? I ask you to do this because we here know this story. We've heard this before, this evening meal, this foot washing, this communion this command. 
But the disciples, the disciples didn't know that. The disciples were clueless about what even the near future would bring later on that evening. They didn't know. They were coming to a celebration. Passover was approaching. This was a dinner beforehand. They had secured a room, the upper room, in which to hold this, the banquet. They had food prepared. All was good. Tonight was a great night. Tonight was a glorious night. So let us put aside our, the fact that we know what's going to happen because we've heard this story before. Let us put aside the fact that our knowledge makes this somewhat of a bittersweet evening and dinner and let us be one of the disciples here who is wrapped up in Jesus' excitement in Jesus' glory in the celebration of this dinner and wrapped up in Jesus' love. Because Jesus knew in advance what this evening would bring. But in spite of that knowledge, Jesus chose to make this a celebration. Je Jesus chose to make this an evening filled with joy and with love. And so Jesus elects to show the disciples, as he puts it, the full extent of his love. Now certainly Jesus had showed his love to those that he had encountered with in his ministry, to the disciples, to the crowds that had came and seen him, to the ruling elite who sometimes were with him and sometimes were against him. He had showed his love through healings and cleansings. He would shown his love through forgiveness. He would shown his love through teaching. But tonight, tonight, he says, I will show you the full extent of my love. This is a special night. This is a glorious night. This is a wonderful night. He begins showing this love with a foot washing. Sandals on a path of dirt or on a road of dirt make for very dusty feet. And it was a custom of hospitality to wash your guest's feet. Now, the host would never do this. The host would have a servant wash the feet, or if there wasn't a servant, maybe the lowest member of the household to wash the guest's feet. But this was a sign of courtesy, of washing the dust that would get on your feet, traveling just a short distance, even after you had bathed. Jesus showed his love by humbly serving the disciples here, washing their feet, doing the very dirty work for them, of showing them he did not regard himself as superior to or better than them, but that he was there to wash their feet, for they were children of God, just as he is a child of God. We are reminded by Paul in Philippians where he says, Jesus, who being in the nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Yes, Christ is showing the full extent of his love in serving all, because we remember, as he said, if you wish to lead, you must serve all persons. And so Jesus was doing that tonight. Here he was, their teacher, their leader. Here he was, God himself. Here he was, perfection, washing the disciples' feet, choosing to serve them. Now today, our feet are pretty well protected. We wear shoes most of the time, hides our feet. We're walking on paved surfaces, not dirt paths most of the time. Our feet don't get very dirty. But our hands, now that's another topic. We talk about people getting their hands dirty by doing some underhanded deed. Or we talk about people having blood on their hands for having done something very wrong, even if it wasn't quite murder. 
our hands get very dirty. And so washing of our hands might be viewed as even a symbolic act of washing ourselves of our sin, of washing these deeds, these wrong deeds away and cleansing ourselves. Today, we also wash our hands to protect ourselves. We wash our hands to be clean, clearly, but to wash away things that may infect us or may infect others that we might touch. Today, we wash our hands often to protect us of something that we were not responsible for, not of a guilt of ours, but something that comes from outside. And in these days of COVID-19, we wash our hands even more thoroughly and even more often to protect us and to protect others, others that we love, that we care about. We do this to try to stem the flow of this virus. So we wash our hands out of love out of love for ourselves and out of love for others. This is an act of caring and love that we do. Which leads us to another way that Christ was showing the full extent of his love that evening. For he gives the disciples a new command. He gives us a new command through the disciples. Because he says, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. Jesus says, as I have loved you. As I have wanted you to be healed and to be whole. As I have wanted you to be in right relationship with God. In right relationship with perfection. As I have wanted you to live abundantly to have a life that is abundant. As I have wanted you to know that you belong, that you always have, and that you always will. As I have loved you, empowers you to love others, Jesus tells us. It empowers you to heal and make them whole from my love flowing through you. To show others the abundant life that I hold forward for them as I hold forward for you by showering them with the love that I have put upon you. To let others know that they are wanted and belong to me and to you by the love I pour out without any reservation upon all of creation, upon all of you. John Kasich said, in an article a little bit earlier this week. No, this is me, knowing with dead, solid certainty that we are graced by the most powerful being ever to exist in the universe, who cares for us, who cares for our families, who cares about what we do and how we live our lives and the footprints we mean to leave behind. He does. Absolutely, he does. And if you come to embrace this truth as I have come to embrace this truth, you can internalize it and grow from it and it can give you the hope and strength and confidence you need to get to the other side of even an unknowable difficulty such as this one, the COVID-19 pandemic, and to somehow emerge from it all for the better. That night, long ago in the upper room, and this evening in the room that you're currently sitting, Jesus made plain and visible the full extent of his love. This is a joyous evening. This is a celebration dripping with his love, which is beyond our comprehension. Our compassion, our grief, our sorrow for what Jesus will suffer in the coming evening and tomorrow, that can wait for tomorrow. 
This was, back then and now, a wondrous evening. Praise the Lord for showing us His love, the full extent of His love. Amen. As I mentioned in the message, it's not so much our feet these days that get dirty, but our hands. And particularly in this time with the COVID virus, we are urged to wash our hands frequently. So tonight, let us do a, foot, a hand washing instead of a foot washing. So I encourage you to join with me if you wish. Get some water and a towel available, a bowl, and let's go through this act, practice together so that we can, across time and space, all be washing one another's hands as we come together and worship here this evening. And so I'll urge you to get some water and pour it prayerfully over each hand, taking a moment to do so. And while pouring it over your hands, be conscious of the love and the grace that God pours out upon us, washing away our sins, bringing us full to life. So join with me as we carefully and prayerfully wash our hands. Doing so, being thankful for the symbolism here of the love that God is pouring out upon us. And then take a towel and dry your hands. Coming clean and being able to step into the life that Christ calls us to, the abundant life, the life that's full that Christ wants us to follow. Thank you for joining with me in this exercise. So it was on this night, this very evening, that Christ called the disciples together for what he knew would be one last meal, but for what they knew was just in preparations for celebrations, just a wonderful time together. And so Jesus spread a meal before them, and he took the bread, and he blessed it. And in raising it, he said, This is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup and he said, this is the new covenant of the forgiveness of sins sealed in my blood. When you drink of this cup, also do so in remembrance of me. And so when we take this bread and when we take this cup, we're again proclaiming that Christ is our Lord and that he will come again. So I invite you now to take your bread and to take your wine or your juice and let's join together in the practice of communion. Let's go and join together in this sacrament of taking a generous piece of the bread that this is the bread of life and dipping it into the cup For the forgiveness of sins. And let us pray. God of grace, we give you thanks for the feast of redemption we have shared in the body and the blood of your Savior. If you have nourished us with love, let our lives proclaim your great love for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and resides with you and with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, let us offer our prayers for the people. O oh, liberating and redeeming God, we give thanks that you hear the cries of your people. Therefore, in our time of trial, we call upon your name. 
as Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, stooped down to wash his disciples' feet. Teach us to love and serve our neighbors with Christ-like compassion and humility. And as Christ the Lord has handed on to us a feast of grace in his body and blood, help us to share with all who hunger the gifts we have received from you. In God, our liberator and redeemer, we give thanks that you have heard our cry. Continue to lead us from death to life eternal and let our lives be a sign of your saving love. Amen. And now let us join in praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as Paul told the Thessalonians, Thessalonians, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Come back tomorrow for the Good Friday worship service. And God bless you and be with you until then. Amen.